Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box. And today I'm gonna be introducing you to a new segment called What Would I Choose? So this is about breaking down where I'm fishing, the time of day, the conditions, the forage base, everything that is in that water. Then we're gonna open up the box and you're gonna see if you would pick the same two baits that I would pick for getting the most amount of catches, the most amount of bites, or the five biggest bites. So I'm gonna choose two baits from here, one to get a lot of bites and one to get those bigger bites. So let me break down today's conditions of where we're fishing and what we're gonna what we're gonna be targeting and then you can look at these baits with me and see if you pick the exact same ones. Then we're gonna get out here for two hours and we're gonna give each bait two segments of 30 minutes. I'm gonna go one bait, next bait, back to that bait and that bait again and we'll see how they perform and see if my guess was slightly off or see if we guessed it right and see maybe you guessed it better than I did. So let's get started. Today we're gonna to be fishing on my lake. It's a 20 acre community lake. About six to eight feet out off of the shoreline, you're dealing with two to three foot deep, and then all of a sudden it drops into about eight foot deep on each cove. The middle of the lake is 12 feet deep. So most of the lake is featureless, but it has cara algae, which is like a grass that grows about this tall. So it's very stringy, very algae-like on the bottom, so it's hard to drag exposed hook baits through that. Um, now, what I do have is sunken Christmas trees on the bottom in certain areas, and we do have this bulkhead, a wooden ledge that runs all the way around the lake that has a little bit of shade line. Our primary forage is crawfish, bluegills, crappie, and shell cracker, and juvenile bass. Now, with today's conditions, it's about 90 degrees outside, and the water temperature is in the upper 70s. We have about two and a half, three foot of visibility, and our wind today is only about four to eight miles an hour at times, so the wind is not a very dominant player. We've had steady heat conditions, not overly windy. Now, think about all that in play, that's relatively steady. Our moon phase is 50%, and the interesting part is it's coming up at about almost uh, 1 a.m. in the morning, and it's setting about 1 a.m. in the af 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And what, from my experience, plays is crawfish tend to roam around a lot during the day when that moon is up during that day. Now today is July 5th, so we are on a summer bite, and we're fishing in the middle of the afternoon, the hardest time, and I know my lake has been very difficult lately. So in the summertime, we're either looking for heavy cover, heavy shade up shallow, or we're looking for deeper structures. So come, in, come and think about that. I have Christmas trees sunk out deep, and I do have boat docks surrounding my lake. So a lot of our key targets are gonna be shade under boat docks, shade up along the wall, but the fish would be visible if they were there. That doesn't mean that they won't be there. Or maybe Christmas trees out deeper or grass out deeper. So let's take a look at the lures now that are in the June LTB Bass XL box. Um, a live target swim bait. This is probably about seven inches long, I'm guessing. Uh, boot tail swim bait style. We have some big baits, some big bite baits, excuse me. Uh, green pumpkin battle bugs. That's like a big green pumpkin crawfish imitator. Then we have the California classic Delta Frog. We have a topwater frog. Then we have the Clear Lake Lures Popper. And then we have the Bootlegger Lipless Crankbait. Rattle trap style bait right there. So let me tell you what I chose. And I'm going to start with what I didn't choose. The first thing I didn't choose was the big swim bait from Live Target. Time and place, this will kill for those big fish. Like I said, I'm looking for numbers and I'm looking for a big fish bait. This live target swim bait right here, I really prefer five to six foot of visibility or more, so I immediately want to put that down. Now that doesn't mean that if I didn't throw this today, a big one wouldn't buy it, uh, bite it, but I'm going by experience, time on the water, and education. I've been bass fishing my whole life. So that's the first one I'm putting down. The next one I am putting down, which I hate to do this, is the popper. Um, I really like a popper in low light conditions or where there's matted vegetation and openings that I can pop it right next to it. 
I know if I'm gonna have to get under a boat dock, I'm gonna need shade, treble hooks. It's gonna be very difficult to get it under a boat dock. Um, that grass, like I said, is along the bottom and those trees are along the bottom. So there's a big gap in between that those fish would have to travel. So that's why I'm putting the popper down. The next thing I'm putting down, which I may regret, this could be the killer, is the lipless crankbait. Ah, uh, makes a lot of noise. We have low visibility. This could get them. It covers water fast. It's for making long cast and covering water. That is actually the reason I put this down. It's been very hot. It's been relatively slick. There's not a lot of wind, but this could become a player. Now here's the two that I chose. The California Classic Delta Frog and the Big Bite Baits Battle Bug. That's a five inch crawdad plastic. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna rig these and why I chose them. Right off the bat, the reason why I chose the frog is I could skip a frog very well. It's weedless. I could throw it under boat docks. The frog gets a much better bite than average for bigger fish. If you're gonna trigger a big fish up shallow feeding, I could throw this, I can hit the walls, I could throw it under boat docks and usually it's not going to get snagged and that is what I'm using to target those bigger fish hopefully that are up shallow under boat docks. They may not be there. I may kick myself for putting that lipless down. We'll see. Now, for the soft plastic creature bait. Plastics work great when it's slick out, um, when it's hot and sunny. In the middle of the day, those fish are gonna hunker down into stuff. They don't wanna chase. And that plastic looks fantastic right there. Also reason I chose this is I said the moon's up the majority of the day. There's going to be crawfish roaming around. That's a great crawfish imitation. Most of them are black and red out here, but green pumpkin was the choice I had. There's a lot of bluegill out here that are also green pumpkin and the baby bass sometimes look a little bit green pumpkin as well. So that's going to appeal to them. Green pumpkin is a good all around color. So this is my numbers bait. Now let me show you how I'm going to rig these. All right guys, so I have the battle bug rigged up on a medium heavy uh, seven foot rod with 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. This happens to be 15 right here. I have it on a four out mustad flipping hook and a three eighths ounce tungsten weight. Now there is two bobber stops right there. If I'm trying to throw it and get inside of cover or through cover, I like those bobber stops. If I'm dragging it along the bottom, I'm gonna slide my bobber stops up about 12 inches. Uh, in case I'm on the bottom, that fish picks it up he's less likely to feel the weight and he'll hold on to the bait for a little bit longer. So that's why I'm doing that. Now I've also dipped the tips of these pinchers in chartreuse. The reason why I did that, as I said, there's bluegill and crawfish, a lot of crawfish roam in the bottom, but bluegill have little chartreuse accents. So maybe if this is dropping or if I cast it and hop it up, maybe they'll make mistake it for a bluegill as well and eat it. Um, bass also have a little affliction for chartreuse and it's on the tip of those appendages which is going to show that accent a little bit more it's going to highlight the action of that bait as it falls for me now for our frog i have that rigged up on a heavy which is a fast action right here this is anywhere from seven to a seven and a half is really good for a frog and i have it on 65 pound braid the reason i like 65 is i like to throw over structure um, under boat docks and i give them absolutely zero drag i lock it down and wrench them out as fast and as hard as possible it's not about fighting the bass that's up under something or over the top of something it's about hooking them and getting them to the boat so now let's give these bait each uh let's give these bait an hour each and uh let's see what happens i may strike out may get my butt kicked may slaughter some fish who knows but let's see and hopefully that rattle trap that little lipless crate bait is not gonna hurt me all right guys we're on the boat and i'm gonna start the first 30 minute segment right here with the frog set a timer for 30 minutes okay 30 minutes let's go all right guys, as I'm coming down this wall right here, I already casted and skipped around a few docks and a few shade pockets. I'm coming down this wall, you'll see that the sun is pretty much hitting this wall to where that shade's not very big. These fish that could be up here are more than likely out here. So I'm going faster on the trolling motor till I reach the next, next dock, or if I reach some shade lines, then I'm gonna slow down once again and pick those apart. I'm gonna start with this outside, outside area. Now there's not a lot of this, so I need to pick it apart thoroughly. I'm gonna start from the outside leg here. I'm gonna kind of work along the shade line. In case there's two or three fish in there, if I work out here, 
catch one, I might be able to throw it up against this little boat next to this dock and catch another one. If I cast it all the way in, I could end up catching that and spooking another one out as I fight him. Now one thing I'm doing right here, as you see me casting this big shadow of this giant willow tree, we can only see roughly three foot deep. So really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to separate my cast by double that in the casting distance. So if I cast to this spot, I want to cast times two. So I want to cast six feet apart from it because that's the strike zone that those fish could be in. A lot of the time they won't hear it, they won't feel it, or they won't see it if it's too dirty. So even though there could be fish in this shade line, if I throw once right down the middle and don't get bit, I may have missed six feet to the right or six feet to the left where that, oh, I just had one follow it. That was a pound and a half. He came up, stopped as soon as I got it out into the sun. So I know I need to slow it down in that shade. Oh, there it is, guys. That's the timer for the first 30 minutes. I have to put down the frog and it is time to switch to that creature bait. I had one about a pound follow it up. I've been casting under, I probably covered about 60% of the docks so far uh, with no luck. So we're gonna switch over to that creature bait. Hopefully we can dial something Man, I'm gonna run the next section of docks when I get back to this bad boy and hopefully we can find something to chew this. But it's so far, it's not looking like the big fish are up shallow. I may have kicked myself in the butt putting down that lip. All right guys, so the retrieve I'm gonna do with this battle bug, I'm gonna make a long cast. I'm out here, this side's about 10 foot of water and there's shallow bay that goes up this way and shallow bay that goes up this way. Um, if any late spawners moved out, they're gonna be on this transition and the summertime fish are gonna be out near that 12 feet. So I'm kind of in between. I'm making a long cast, I'm gonna get a tight line. I'm gonna twitch, twitch, just like a crawdad. Twitch, twitch and let it fall. Twitch, twitch and let it fall. Right now I have that weight pegged, so it'll dart in fast, just like a crawdad trying to flee something. Uh, then I'm gonna try to drag it with those bobber stops moved up, kind of more like a Carolina rig style, but it's still Texas rig with a weight. Go. No! That was a big one. Oh! That was a big one I just lost. All right, guys, I'm out here in the middle. And I'm doing that crawdad retrieve. I bounced it over a Christmas tree that sunk out here in the middle. Had one pegged. As soon as I went my second snap, he loaded me up. I tried to reel into him, but he shook it off before I could load that rod up. So, sucks. Got him. No, oh my God. Oh my gosh, that was another giant. <laughs> Oh, and there's the timer. I lost one, missed the hook set on the other. Um, when I started dragging, the weight felt a little bit heavy. The adjustments I can make probably for the next section uh, when I start throwing it again is maybe drop down in weight size or try to go weightless and get it, let it fall down there and slowly drag it. Um, both bites I got clearly were reaction. The fish shook loose relatively quick. Um, the big bite that I had on, I popped it from a Christmas tree and he clearly reacted to it. So it was a reaction strike. Whereas if I was throwing that lipless and they reacted to it, I could have possibly landed them because of the treble hooks. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments. I'm going back to the frog now and I'm going to finish hitting some docks. Hopefully something has moved up in there. Otherwise, I'm going to stick to my guns. Another one. Oh, Mr. Bass. <laughs> oh, big and under, big and under. Oh, man, come on. Okay guys, just paralleling that visual line, like I said, I was trying to get over to this next dock and paralleling the visual line. There was one about three to four pounds. It was hard to tell. He came up under it twice. I just got two barely visuals, but it was a big one. Came up under it twice. Uh, didn't need it. A red ear just hit it, but he didn't need it, um, which honestly makes me think, considering I've had 
two small follows, two one pound follows on the frog and one like little half pounder strike it, makes me think right there, I may have been able to catch that fish on a puffer. So partially regretting the frog when I could have done the lipless, which may have got a couple of bites, or I could have done the popper, which may have very well caught that fish right there. Who really knows? But uh, I'm gonna stick to the frog. There's big red ears coming up biting the frog right now, so the pan fishing's gotta be good over here. But sticking it out, hopefully a big one will eat the frog. Oh. Getting my butt kicked. Time for the switch. Your timer is set. Back to the creature bait. I switched it out to a quarter ounce now. Um, my dad was actually fishing right behind me and hooked another monster and lost it. So they're just not getting it very well today. It's real tough. But that is two big fish we definitely had on. Just kind of sucks not being able to boat them. So let's keep trying. Oh. And time is up. And I have struck out. Had one big one on. And my dad had a big one on behind me. And that was it. The frog was a bit of a gamble. Um, did get one small bite on it. It had two small follows. No big fish up shallow showed any interest in the frog. Uh, but sometimes that's it. You know, that's a kicker bait. Uh, sometimes they're crushing it, but today I try to use it as a kicker bait and see what I can get. And uh, just lost one on the creature bait. I've uh, got a couple more bites on it. Never connected with those, so I never knew how big. The one I lost felt like it was probably over three or four pounds, but that's how it goes. That's only two hours. Definitely on a very, very tough bite right now out here. But I uh, wanted to give it a try, show you guys how I was using it. Hopefully you learned something from it and hopefully you click that subscribe button and uh, follow us at Lucky Tackle Box and follow me, Informative Fisherman, on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Later guys, appreciate you watching.